it all began, I think, as a result of the witch trials never having a proper ending. The last five to be exonerated were exonerated in 2001. So it was a very slow process. So that the idea that there really had been witches in Salem lived on in people's minds. During the 18th century, as, as early as that, tradespeople in the city started to actually capitalize on this association. You got a fishmonger in the 18th century who actually traded under the name Witch City. And you got several business people using Witch City as their trade name. There was an oil firm, a bicycle manufacturer, oh, a popcorn factory. So you had this sort of carrying on, um, keeping the idea alive in people's minds. 20th century, you started to get tourism. In, in the 60s, um, Salem wasn't doing well as a town because a lot of the manufacturing industry that had been here was leaving. At the beginning of the 70s, Laurie Cabot came to Salem. She's a self-proclaimed witch um, with a great flair for PR who actually persuaded Michael Dukakis, who was governor of Massachusetts at the time, in a rather confused moment to give her the title of Official Witch of Salem. And she was followed by an awful lot of Wiccans. But just the fact that they were here obviously tremendously reinforced the connection between Salem and witches, because here were all these people now living here who actually do claim to be witches. There are now a very large minority of the Salem population. Well, given that what actually happened was that 20 innocent people died because of actual accusations of witchcraft, the fact that people come flocking to Salem now to, as it were, celebrate witchcraft is tremendously ironic. <laughs>